Welcome to Calisthenics Through the Ages. Let me start by saying, I apologize for this video. I've just given you a brand new thing to worry about. I'm sorry for putting this idea into your head. You probably never thought about it before, and now you'll probably never be able to entirely forget about it. But I've been thinking about this for a long time, and I finally decided that it's worth taking a serious look at. And after all, this is a channel about calisthenics training and about health and fitness for older athletes. For anyone joining for the first time, my name is Rob and I'm 54 years old. The topic of this video is our handstands and various difficult exercises done in an inverted position like handstand push-ups, dangerous for older people. And specifically, could they increase your risk of an aneurysm? This video is long and parts of it get pretty technical. I'm sorry about that. The topic is complex and I wanted to do it justice. I do end up coming to some conclusions and I want to be very clear about how I reach those conclusions. I'm using chapters in this video, so feel free to skip parts that you're not interested in. In particular, the parts about the scientific data and about risk assessment are pretty involved. I've been thinking about this for a while. Why? Well, I spend an awful lot of time straining like crazy while being upside down. It's clear that the blood pressure in your head goes way up when you're inverted, and up even more when you strain to lift yourself. Sometimes I happen to look at myself in the mirror immediately after standing up from a handstand and, well, I look like this. It's not pretty. I started wondering whether things like handstand push-ups might be uniquely dangerous for old guys. But what really got me thinking about it was when I started watching a lot of strongman competition. When strongmen and powerlifters deadlift heavy, blood often comes out of their noses, and sometimes out of their eyes. When Eddie Hall became the first person to deadlift 500 kilograms, he lost consciousness, blood came out of his nose, eyes, and ears, and he went temporarily blind. Now obviously, I'm not straining that hard. On the other hand, Eddie was still in his 20s when he made that lift, and I'm in my 50s. And he wasn't doing his lifts upside down. Also, I've now known a couple of people who have had aneurysms and strokes at around my age. That gets scary, let me tell you. I liked it a lot better when the only people I knew who had serious health problems were a couple of generations older than me. Anyway, I work out for a lot of reasons, but goal number one is health. I'd hate to think that my workouts themselves are introducing a huge health risk. And it's not just my risk right now. I plan to still be doing this stuff when I'm 64, and 74, and 84, and 94. Probably not exactly what I'm doing now, but some version of it. In fact, one of my lifetime goals is that I would like to be the first person in history to hold a handstand at age 100. So it's not just my current risk. I'd really like to understand my lifetime risk. I've looked through the scientific literature, and there's not a lot of data on this kind of thing. No one actually has the answer to my question. No one's ever done a study on how often old people have aneurysms when they're doing handstand push-ups. However, I did find a couple of relevant scientific studies. I'm going to explore what the data says, try to assess how big of a risk this is, and how it compares to other risks, and then I'm going to talk about what steps one might take to mitigate that risk. First off, a disclaimer. I am not a medical professional. This is not medical advice. You should not get your medical advice from some guy on the internet, even someone like me who sounds like he knows what he's talking about. If you have concerns about your health, or if you have any underlying conditions, or if you have any reason to think that you're at risk for aneurysm or stroke, you should consult with your doctor or medical professional. This video represents my views on the subject, and specifically, what I think is reasonable for a healthy older person to do. Okay, so, what is an aneurysm exactly? An aneurysm is just an enlargement in an artery caused by the artery wall being weakened. A brain aneurysm is an aneurysm that has occurred in the brain. An aneurysm has no symptoms and doesn't cause any problems unless it ruptures. Estimates vary, but around 1 to 2% of people in the general population have a brain aneurysm. 50 to 80% of aneurysms never rupture and will never cause any problems. In the U.S., there are about 30,000 cases of ruptured aneurysm per year. That suggests that between half a percent and one percent of all people that have brain aneurysms experience a rupture every year. A ruptured aneurysm can also cause a stroke because the blood supply to part of the brain can be disrupted. About 25% of individuals with a ruptured aneurysm die within 24 hours, and another 25% don't survive six months. And many survivors are left with permanent brain damage. Aneurysms develop mostly due to either genetic factors or chronic factors. The chronic factors are the usual suspects, obesity, high blood pressure, and most relevant to me, age. 
the most common age for aneurysms to develop is between 40 and 60. So the answer to the question, can handstand push-ups cause an aneurysm, is almost certainly no. An aneurysm is a chronic condition that develops over time and is not caused by a single event. I was asking the wrong question. What I really want to know is, can doing handstand push-ups cause an existing aneurysm to rupture? And unfortunately, the news is not entirely good. The good news is that exercise is unequivocally beneficial as it tends to lower blood pressure and reduce the risk of aneurysms forming over time. The bad news is that research shows that things that cause the blood pressure in your head to spike can act as triggers for aneurysm rupture. A couple of years ago, I asked my doctor what he thought about this. I described the way I work out. I emphasized that I spend a lot of time pushing like crazy while being upside down. He told me that he didn't think it was a risk for aneurysm or aneurysm rupture. He told me that it wouldn't be dangerous unless I had some underlying risk factor. So that's great, right? And he is a healthcare professional. So there you go. End of story. Except, man, I just didn't get the feeling that he really gave it a lot of thought. And he's not a specialist in this area. So I finally decided to look carefully at the research. I searched the scientific literature to find out whether anyone has ever studied this kind of thing. And it turns out that a couple of groups have. I found two studies, both published in the journal Stroke, one in 2003 and one in 2011, that specifically looked at trigger factors for subarachnoid hemorrhage, which is medical jargon for when a brain aneurysm ruptures. I'm going to go ahead and just call these events brain aneurysm ruptures. These studies were both case crossover studies. What they did was they identified some activities that they wanted to test for being trigger factors. Then they interviewed people who were recent survivors of brain aneurysm rupture and determined what they had been doing leading up to the event. Then they did some statistical analysis to try to figure out how risky the supposed trigger factors were. Like, how much more likely were they to have a brain aneurysm rupture after vigorous exercise than not after vigorous exercise? This study design isn't perfect, but it's probably the best you can do. You can't do a randomized controlled trial because you can't randomly assign people to trigger factor and non-trigger factor groups. That would involve trying to induce aneurysm rupture in one of the two groups. And that probably wouldn't be ethical. The 2003 study looked at moderate to extreme exertion, drinking four or more alcoholic drinks, and smoking four or more cigarettes as possible triggers. They considered them triggers if they were done within a two-hour window of the rupture. They found that the increased risk of moderate to extreme exertion was a factor of 2.7. That means that people who underwent moderate to extreme exertion were 2.7 times more likely to have a ruptured aneurysm than people who didn't. Interestingly, they found that heavy cigarette smoking and binge drinking were not associated with a higher risk of a rupture. Keep in mind, they're not talking about chronic risk there. Obviously, heavy drinking and smoking are associated with a very large chronic risk of heart attack, stroke, aneurysm, etc. Their results mean that their subjects were not more likely to have a ruptured aneurysm within a two-hour window of heavy drinking or smoking. The 2011 study looked at eight potential trigger factors that occurred within one hour of a ruptured brain aneurysm in the subjects. One of them was vigorous exercise and they found an increased risk factor of 2.4 or 3.5, depending on the intensity of the exercise, which is in line with the 2003 study. Some of the other trigger factors they looked at were drinking coffee, sexual intercourse. Whoa, 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 wait just a minute there, Mr. So-called scientist sitting there in your ivory tower. Some things are non-negotiable. All right, sorry, let's see here. Drinking coffee, sexual intercourse, straining for defecation. Okay, and um, some things are beyond one's control. However, they did say that their research suggested that people with known aneurysms who become constipated should consider laxatives. Noted. Anyway, exercise increased the relative risk of a ruptured aneurysm by a factor of about three. Drinking coffee or cola gave about that same level of increased risk. Being angry, straining for defecation, and sexual intercourse increased the relative risk by factors of 6.3, 7.3, and 11.2, respectively. My guess is that straining to lift something, like a couch or a heavy box, is somewhere in that ballpark. Interestingly, the biggest risk factor was being startled or surprised, which gave an increased risk factor of 23.3. So things that raise your blood pressure do act as trigger factors and do increase your risk of rupturing an aneurysm. Now, unfortunately, these researchers did not think to consider handstand push-ups as a potential trigger factor. So I'm going to have to give a reasonable guess as to how large of a trigger factor they might be. Now, we already know that straining gives an increased risk of about a factor of seven. 
it seems like the risk of handstand push-ups has got to be higher than that. We know that being upside down for a while makes your face turn red and sometimes makes your head feel like it's about to explode. I'm going to guess that the increased risk factor of handstand push-ups is in the range of 15. That's pretty large, but not as large as the risk from being startled. So okay, for argument's sake, let's say I agree that handstand push-ups act as a trigger for ruptured aneurysm with an increased relative risk factor of about 15. What does that mean for me? On the one hand, that sounds like a pretty big risk. It's bigger than drinking coffee, vigorous exercise, or straining hard. On the other hand, it's not as big a risk as being startled, so how bad can it be? But you also have to consider how often you're doing it. I do inverted exercises on a very regular basis. For me, that trigger factor occurs hundreds of times more often than getting startled. It's still only one trigger factor among many, though. I drink a lot of coffee, for example. Of course, I don't really know how to crunch these numbers, but I'm going to show you how I arrived at an estimate. Here's a chart showing my activities, which are trigger factors, along with the size of their relative risk and roughly how many hours per week I spend doing each activity. Based on this, I think that doing lots of handstand push-ups on a regular basis will roughly double my overall risk of aneurysm rupture. Now, with some justification, you could call this a wild guess. I call it a reasonable estimate based on the best available data. Okay, sorry about getting so deep in the weeds there. If you've made it this far into the video, congratulations, way to stick with it. Now, I know what you're thinking. Is it dangerous? Just tell me whether I have to worry about it or not. Well, I do have an answer, and it'll probably surprise you. I'm going to say no. You probably don't actually have to worry about it. But what about all the trigger factor stuff? You said it would double my risk. Yes, I do think that it will roughly double your lifetime risk. But you have to understand the difference between relative risk and absolute risk. Let me explain. Here's a chart showing some numbers for aneurysm risk. On the top line is the risk for the average 54-year-old. I've assigned the risk of having an aneurysm to be 0.01, or 1%. That's roughly the baseline risk that an average 54-year-old has a brain aneurysm. And I've assigned the risk of having that aneurysm rupture as 0.005, or half a percent. Of course, that can only happen if you have an aneurysm in the first place. So the overall risk of aneurysm rupture is the product of those two numbers, 0.005%, or one chance in 20,000. On the next line down, I show my estimated baseline risk. That is, assuming I don't do handstand push-ups. Here, I've only changed the risk of having an aneurysm in the first place, which I've lowered to 0.0025, or one quarter of 1%. I've assigned my personal risk of having an aneurysm as four times lower than an average 54-year-old because I'm very healthy and I don't have any of the risk factors, other than age. So my overall risk of having a ruptured aneurysm is 0.00125%, or one chance in 80,000. And on the last line, I show my revised risk if I do do handstand push-ups. Here is where I've doubled the risk of a rupture. Only that portion of the risk is affected. Of course, my doing handstand push-ups has no effect on my risk of having an aneurysm in the first place. Anyway, if I do handstand push-ups, it increases my total annual risk of a rupture to 0.0025%, or one chance in 40,000. So you see that although my relative risk has increased by a factor of two, which sounds like a lot, my absolute risk is still very low. I'm gonna give you some context by comparing the size of that risk to some other risks. The average 54-year-old male in the United States has about a 0.7% chance per year of dying. That 0.7% chance is represented by the large square. Inside the square are shaded areas whose size represents the relative chance of dying of some specific causes. As you can see, the two really big causes of death for a 54-year-old are cancer and heart disease. And here you can see an illustration of how big the chances of death from aneurysm are. The top red square is my risk of death from aneurysm if I don't do handstand push-ups, and the bottom one is my risk of death if I do do handstand push-ups. As you can see, the increased risk of dying is pretty small. For example, that increase in risk is about 34 times smaller than my risk of dying in a car accident, and I don't spend much time worrying about that. And in the realm of calisthenics, there are some things that are a much bigger danger than aneurysm. If we're concerned about safety, we should probably focus on those. Incidentally, the calculation changes drastically if you know you have an aneurysm. For me, that would increase the risk by a factor of 400. 
making it about the same size as my cancer risk. I don't know about you, but if I knew I had an aneurysm, especially a large one, I wouldn't do handstands. I'd find some other way to exercise. But given that this is my best information about my current situation, my risk is so low that it doesn't make a lot of sense to worry about doing handstand push-ups. I'd reduce my risk of dying much more by driving carefully and looking both ways when I cross the street. Okay, it may be true that the increased risk of ruptured aneurysm due to handstand push-ups is so small that you really don't need to worry about it. But the thing is that it's so friggin' scary. The idea that a blood vessel in your head could just pop with no warning? and maybe kill you, that's terrifying. So I have trouble being strictly rational about it. So what can I do about it? How can I mitigate the risk? Well, I think that the most important thing that you can do is to control your breathing. And specifically, don't hold your breath when you're upside down. It's very tempting to hold your breath while you perform a lift. In fact, it kind of happens naturally, unless you train yourself not to do it. There's a technique in weightlifting called the Valsalva maneuver, where you push forcibly to exhale but keep your airway closed so that you can't. It's necessary to do this if you're lifting very heavy. It rigidifies your torso and helps protect your spine. But it's thought to be at least somewhat dangerous, and it's the main reason why powerlifters and strongmen sometimes bleed from their noses and eyes. And because the blood pressure in your head starts off very high just from being upside down, I think that something like the Valsalva could be extra dangerous for things like handstand push-ups. It's not completely clear-cut, though. There's a really nice paper by Dr. Jonathan Sullivan from Starting Strength, where he argues not only that weightlifting is not associated with an increased risk of aneurysm rupture, but that the Valsalva maneuver is actually protective. He also makes a really good argument, backed with data, that aneurysms that are destined to pop are probably going to pop no matter what you do, so you should go ahead and train hard and not worry about it. I think that's probably true, but I still think that in the case of handstand push-ups, where you're upside down, and where holding your breath isn't necessary, it's probably a good precaution to not hold your breath. And holding your breath really isn't necessary. Now, it is necessary when you're squatting or deadlifting heavy, where you need your torso to be absolutely rigid, but you can stay tight enough for any handstand exercises without holding your breath. It's kind of hard to do, though. You have to train yourself to not hold your breath. You have to be aware of your breathing and force yourself to breathe out slowly while you're pushing. In a couple of previous videos, I've talked about how to train with joint pain and how to make progress without injuring yourself as an older athlete. And a lot of what I've talked about has to do with common sense things like using weights or exercise variations that you can control with good form, doing reasonable numbers of reps or using controlled negatives rather than straining like crazy to get one more rep with bad form. You're probably holding your breath while you do that. And in general, I think that all the things that you can do to make joint injuries less likely will also make a ruptured aneurysm less likely. I honestly did not know where this video was headed when I started making it, and the way that I presented the video kind of mirrored my own learning process. I'm very happy that I took the time to think carefully about this issue because I really was worried about it. Now I feel like I understand it a lot better, and on the whole, I feel relieved. I hope that you feel the same way after watching the video. Just a quick summary for the people who skipped all the boring parts. There's likely a small additional risk of ruptured aneurysm from doing handstand push-ups, but that risk is small enough that it's probably not worth worrying about. I guess I should have listened to my doctor in the first place. The idea of an aneurysm rupture is so scary that it seems like a bigger risk than it actually is. But what I'm doing to ease my mind and what I would advise people to do if I were giving advice is if you're gonna do this kind of stuff, control your breathing and especially never hold your breath when you're upside down. Thanks for watching. I'm very far from being an expert in this subject. Please let me know in the comments if I've missed something or if you think I've gotten anything terribly wrong or if you have any thoughts on any of this. If you liked the video, well, I doubt that anyone liked this video, but if you found it useful or informative, please hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. On second thought, subscribe and I promise not to make any more videos as depressing as this one. Good luck and happy training.